Support Move University in the production of more video tutorials by making a financial contribution or by getting yourself one of these t-shirts. Details under the Support Move section on MoveUniversity.com. The link will be in the description below. Thank you and enjoy. Okay, so units and conversion factors. These are very, very important to problem solving in chemistry, just in general. Um, so much of chemistry is this problem solving that requires a solid understanding of these units and conversion factors. It's very, very, very important. Super important. In fact, that's why I wrote that there. Okay. So the first thing that we need, we need to know is that measurements of any sort are made up of two things. The first thing is, of course, a number. And the second thing is a unit or units. Okay. Um, so, for example, if I someone asks, how, how tall am I? I, I would tell you I'm 6'1". Okay, so what does that actually mean? If I just say six one, that's just numbers, right? But specifically, anyone uh, you know who hears that and understands what I'm saying understands that that means that I'm six feet. Oops, excuse me, six feet, six feet, and one inch tall, right? So I'm six feet one inch. I could also say that I'm 185. 185 what? 185 centimeters. So here we have numbers and units that tell you exactly what those numbers mean. Okay, So measurements have not only a number but a unit as well. Um, you can also have ratios of units, right? It doesn't have to be just, just one unit like centimeters or uh, I could the six feet one inch could also just be in 73 inches. But it could be a ratio of units like how fast is that car going? Well that car is going 60 kilometers per hour or um, 100 or a thousand <laughs> uh, miles per hour, that'd be insane. But uh, the idea is that that's a ratio of units, right? 60 kilometers to every one hour, 100 miles per hour. That's not, I don't know any cars that can go that fast. But the point is that you can have a ratio of units. The second thing, um, you can multiply, divide, and cancel units just like you can with numbers. Okay, so let's, let's multiply some units here. For an example, thinking about the volume of a cube. So the volume of a cube, we just know it's length times width, length times width times height, right? So let's just say each each dimension, right? Um, it's, because it's a cube, is uh, ten centimeters. So we could take the ten, the tens, and multiply them. Ten times ten times ten, and the centimeters and multiply them. Centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. So the tens multiplied through gives us a thousand, and the centimeters multiplied by each other is centimeters cubed. Right, centimeter one, two, three centimeters, so centimeters cubed, and so that's why the volume is expressed in cubic centimeters in this case. We can also divide units, right? For instance, like in gas mileage, let's say you drove 400 miles on a 20-gallon tank. So how many miles did you get per gallon? You could take the 400 miles and divide it by the 20 gallons, and then you divide those numbers and divide the units as well. So if you divide the numbers, you get 20 miles for every one gallon, and you have 20 miles per gallon, which you can express as MPG, or you, of course you could write that as 20 miles per gallon, specifically 20 miles per one gallon. Right? That's a ratio of units, and in that case we're dividing these units. The miles are being divided by gallons. Now you can also cancel units, just like you can cancel numbers. So let's say the question was, if I get 20 miles per gallon, how far can I get with 80 gallons? So what I did here is I set it up so that my answer would give me miles. I, I want to know how many miles I can go right on 80 gallons. So I put the 80 gallons out here, and I want the gallons to go away, right? Because my answer is not going to be not going to have anything to do with gallons. It's going to be in miles. How far can I get? How many miles can I drive, right? So I put the 80 gallons here, and I'm going to multiply it by the 20 miles per gallon. Some people already do this intuitively, but don't really think exactly about how the units cancel. So here we have 80 gallons times 20 miles per gallon. And it's set up so that when you multiply, you're going to multiply 80 times 20 and divide that whole number by 1. And so 80 times 20 is going to be 1,600. And the units I need to get are just miles. And the reason why that happens is because the gallon divided by the gallon cancels. Those units cancel. All that I'm left with is just the miles there. Okay. All right. So the next idea I want to talk about is a conversion factor. And this is a very important idea. 
conversion factor is a ratio that allows the ability to express a measurement in a unit different from the unit with which you started. Okay, that's a mouthful. Basically, it allows you to convert one unit to another, right? So let's say, for example, those 1,600 miles that we just found, let's say we wanted to know how many feet those 1,600 miles were. How many feet is that? Well, I guess the first question you'd ask yourself is how many feet are there in one mile? And the answer to that is that there's one mile. Um, one mile is 5,280 feet. Okay, so this, this here, this one mile equals 5,280 feet, that definition there, this is called the conversion factor equation. And we're going to turn this into a conversion factor by doing what we have written in orange over here. The first thing is divide both sides by 5,280 feet. So when you, when you have an equation, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So we have one mile equals 5,280 feet. We're going to divide both sides by 5,280 feet. So here, one mile divided by 5,280 feet equals 5,280 feet divided by 5,280 feet, dividing both sides by that value. And so what happens here? What happens here is that the uh, on the right side, the 5,280 feet here and here cancel, right? The number cancels and the unit cancels. So 5,280 is cancel, the feet cancel, and then we just get 1 over 1, which is just 1, right? So now we have 1 mile over 5,280 feet equals 1. That's what we have there. Okay. Now, over here, we could do the same thing except divide both sides by one mile instead. So, divide both sides here by one mile. What happens there is that on the left side, the one and the one cancel, or they stay there depending on how you want to look at it, and the miles cancel. So we just get the number like one over one, which is just one, right? So again, we have this: one equals 5,280 feet over one mile. These are called conversion factors. This is a conversion factor. These guys here. That is a conversion factor. That is a conversion factor. Notice that one mile, because it's defined as 5,280 feet, or that's like the definition in terms of feet of one mile, that equals one. So this value here, this one mile, this ratio, this ratio is the conversion factor. The conversion factor is a ratio. And this ratio equals 1. So if you multiply any number by 1, that number stays the same, right? Over here, also, this thing is, this is a conversion factor as well. It's a ratio, and this ratio equals 1, right? So we could take this ratio and multiply it by anything, and it wouldn't change the, the value of whatever it is we're multiplying it by. It would only change the measurement. So this is super, super important. So I just, I'm going to repeat what I just said by reading this white portion here. This means that if we multiply something by this conversion factor, we're not changing the value of the measurement. Only the units change, which is very, very important. That's the whole purpose of these conversion factors, to change the units of something without changing the value. So, um, and the reason, of course, why is because multiplying something by 1 just gives you that something, whatever you're multiplying it um, by, by 1. So all conversion factors equal 1. Okay, so the whole reason we started talking about this is because we said that we wanted to find out how many feet those 1,600 miles were. Well, okay, so I know that I'm going to use one of these conversion factors, but which one am I going to use? That's the question. So you're going to use the one that can cancel the unit that you start with. So we're starting with these 1,600 miles. Okay, that's what we've drawn here. That's what I've written here. I want to convert these 1,600 miles to feet. So I want to use the conversion factor. I have to choose between, between I'll call this A and I'll call this B. Which one am I going to use? I want to use the one that will cancel the miles. So it's going to have the miles in the denominator or on the bottom. So this one has feet on the bottom. This one has miles. I'm going to use this one. I'm going to use B. So I'm going to put 5,280 feet on the top and one mile on the bottom. Over here, the miles will cancel. Now I just end up multiplying 1,600 by 5,280, and then divide by 1. The 1 is really irrelevant there in terms of dividing. So what I end up getting, I end up getting 8,448,000 feet, right? Because the miles canceled, all that's left is the feet unit, right? That has not canceled. So that's how many feet there are in those 1,600 miles. Okay, so we just used a conversion factor to change the 1,600 miles 
to feet. This eight eight million four hundred forty eight thousand feet is the same has the same value in terms of it's the same length as sixteen hundred miles. It's just that the unit has changed. That's why conversion factors are so important. Okay. So one thing that's important to note is that um, using conversion factors to answer questions or solve problems, that that sort of process is called um, dimensional analysis. Okay, so when you in, analyze the dimensions of things, that's that's what it's called. Um, and many re many problems will require conversion factors to be used, and some of them will be be um, used in multiple steps. So that's something that you're probably going to see uh, in future videos and perhaps even in practice problems that you have on your own. Um, so it's important to keep track of these conversion factors. Being able to recognize what's going on with them is very, very important to successfully solving problems in chemistry. I did want to note, though, that there are some commonly used um, SI base units. Um, SI stands for System International. It's written SI in fr because it's actually in French. Uh, I'm not going to do a French accent or try to pronounce it. <laughs> it's just the international systems units. Uh, these are the base units that are that um, that are for each of these dimensions. So length is the meter. The little abbreviation for the unit is the m. Mass, kilogram, uh, kg, volume, cubic meter, meter cubed, right? Um, temperature, Kelvin. Um, amount of something is the mole. That's something that's actually pretty important. All this stuff is important. We'll talk more about it later. Uh, the decimal prefixes for the SI units are, are shown here in this table. You guys have probably seen some of these. These, if you're if you're watching this video, it might be because that you've stumbled upon this stuff in class and you're trying to get some more help on it. Um, these tables are are pretty standard here. Um, all these different prefixes tell you basically um, how that prefix relates to one. So. For instance, milli is one thousandth of one. So if you have a millimeter, that's one thousandth of a meter, right? Uh, whereas if you have a giga, gigameter, that's one billion meters. Okay. And some of the ones that are used most commonly, I think, are um, I think pico, nano, micro, milli, centi. Um, not so much deci. I don't really see that very often. Kilo. Uh, mega, those are pretty much the ones that are used most often. Um, so this here is really just just for completeness sake. Uh, you'll probably learn more about this by doing practice problems as opposed to me just talking about it. Okay, so some often important conversion factors. Um, I've, wrote, I've written four here. There are definitely more than just these four that are important, but these are just some that came to mind. Um, that when you're converting from miles to kilometers, it kind of connects the standard uh, English system to... Uh, the metric system, and this here I've written. There's like a curvy little um, equal sign for this one, and actually for this one, for the one kilogram equaling 2.205 pounds. These are estimates; they're not exact values. Um, there, are, there should be more uh, numbers here. If you go further for the decimal places, this is rounded off to um, the uh, thousandths place. Uh, so, so these are not exact values. However, these two here have an actual equal sign. So these values are exact. These are exact values. One milliliter is one cubic centimeter. That's a very, very important um, vo volume conversion factor. Um, and then the inch to centimeters, also that's very, very important, especially as that is an exact measurement. We'll talk more about what exact measurements are and why they're important later. But I hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, be sure to hit it with a like, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Also, be sure to share the video with anyone who you think might find it helpful. Thanks and happy studying.